So in this video, we're going to talk all about KERMA and TERMA. So in your ABR Part 3 exam, it's very imperative you know the basics of medical physics and dose deposition, and part of that is understanding KERMA and TERMA. So define KERMA and what are its two types, define TERMA, discuss which is larger, and when we calculate dose, which do we use and why do we use that? So I'm gonna utilize above my questions here. So the KERMA here is the kinetic energy released in mass or, or matter, depends on what you, you prefer. So here we have the equation is written like this. And for me, it's, it helps me remembering the equation and kind of parlaying that into the, the answer and ultimately what KERMA is. So this is the energy fluence here, and that's multiplied by the mass energy transfer coefficient. And kind of nasty to write there. Certainly, you, I don't think you would ever need to remember this equation for the test. What is important to know though, is that this KERMA is has a value of joules per kilogram. So that's important, something they could definitely throw at you. Now it's got two types. First thing, we have collisional KERMA. So that is the amount of energy released in collision interactions. I'm gonna write that right here. And so that, for example, is Compton effect. Another example would be photoelectric. And so that is what is considered collisional KERMA. And then we also have radiative. And K rad is how I'm going to mention that. And that is the energy released in radiative uh, interactions. So that is radiative. And things like Bremsterlung, that is important when we are talking about that type of KERMA. So now what is TERMA? So TERMA is the total energy released in matter. And so the TERMA is, it is similar to the KERMA. And that again is the energy fluence. And that now is multiplied instead of the mass energy transfer coefficient, the mass attenuation coefficient. So now, which is larger? So terma, I'm just gonna put T, is greater than kerma. And that is because terma includes all the interactions, but kerma only considers the kinetic energy transfer of charged particles. So that is why terma is considered and it truly is larger. And when we calculate the dose, which do we use and why do we use that? So when dose is deposited, I'll put in small areas. I'll just put small areas. That is going to resemble the collisional KERMA. And as those particles release the energy locally, and then the radiative KERMA carries the dose away. So carries dose away. So there is obviously a lot to cover in terms of KERMA and TERMA, but in part three, it's important to kind of keep it bare bones, answer what is asked, because you can dig yourself a lot of holes with this question right here. So even a lot of this extra stuff, the equations, the mass energy versus the mass attenuation coefficient, keep it very simple, answer those questions, and if the examiner wants additional details, they will ask you. If you feel very confident in something, feel free to give a little extra information, but just be careful not to dig yourself a hole to provide the answer of what is actually asked and not give them any more ammunition to fire back at you. And I think you'll do well. If you have any questions, comments, please post below. Thanks so much for watching and happy studying.